I cannot tell you how excited I have been to join you just for this weekend. Um, and uh, I mean, what a blessing it is to get to come to events like this where we just get to have fun and fellowship with people in our community, in our Neo Life family. And so first and foremost, just thank you so much for being a part of Neo Life. Um, you all have the heart and soul of what we do. And thank you to our leaders, Lawrence and Marjorie. I mean, my goodness, what what special people they are. And um, Alan and Nicole, and all the leaders in here. I'm not going to start naming names, I see so many of you. I'm going to get into a really long list. But, all right, this morning. Oh my goodness, who is that? Alan? <laughs> I trusted you with my slides. <laughs> Neo with <laughs> food. Are we opening a friendship city here? I'm just kidding, that wasn't Alan. Um, I may have uh, used AI to generate my slides. And then this is just a lesson for all of you of what can go wrong. The dangers of AI. <laughs> Sorry about that. I promise to double check tomorrow. But <laughs> that was actually an event um, not long ago. And there was a, a guy there who's the founder of this company called Gamma. Have you heard of it? They make slides for you. You just put a few notes in, and that's hence this. He did not warn me about this, though. He really did me dirty. <laughs> But, so this evening, um, Alan asked me to talk about, and well, over this weekend, he said, talk about uh, where we've been, where we are today, and where we're going. And so where we're going, I'm going to touch on that tomorrow. I'm really excited for that part. Uh, but tonight, I want to talk about where we've been and where we are today, um, and our rich history, to talk about our legacy. What is the Neil life difference? And so I've tried to think, like, what, what do I talk about? I mean, my goodness, we have now been around for 65 years, and how do you boil that down into 20 minutes? Um, so have you all heard of the, the black box analogy? It's like, so often used to, to look at like a business or a department or manufacturing, and so on the left you have your inputs. And in Neolife, I, I like to think of that as our Neolife operating system and our leadership team is, is our inputs. And then on the right, you have output. Um, and everything in between is what it takes to get there. I think in Neolife, our three main outputs, our main points of difference that, that we produce as a result of what happens here is number one, incredible products. Mm -hmm. Just absolutely life-changing products. Number two would be our business. Our ultimate business startup. And number three, I think, is which is our secret sauce, if you ask me, is our transformative community. And so what I'm gonna attempt to do tonight is to cut some windows into this black box to give you a glimpse into what I see as some of the really important points of difference of the OI. And so we will start window number one. Do you recognize this guy? <laughs> this is JB, Jerry Brassel, my father. I call him JB. He did once have hair. This is proof. <laughs> and, uh, so this was taken when he was about 18, 19 years old. And this is where it all started. Um, I think probably many of you have heard him uh, tell the story of when he was a young boy and he struggled with asthma and allergies um, and that's how he was introduced to nutrition. But that's not the story that I'm gonna be telling tonight. Um, I wanna talk about the story of how he got into this industry, into direct selling. And it was when he was 19 years old, he had a friend, I think his name was Daryl Reeves, who invited him uh, to a meeting for a direct selling company. Um, it was called Nutribio. And so 
at that meeting, he was like, oh man, I could do this. This this is amazing. I love the concept of like word of mouth advertising and where you could start your own business, which he always wanted to do. He was always entrepreneurial, but he just didn't have um, like the capital to start a traditional business at the time. And so for $48.50, which we're more today, in today's dollars, he got started and he actually borrowed that from his brother Bob, who was at the meeting, um, and quickly signed up his brother as his first recruit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he, he got off to an actually rocky start. Um, before his, his first meeting that he was gonna give, he was so nervous that he had to run to the bathroom and throw up. It's kind of funny to hear him tell the story of how they had like a, a chalkboard, and he'd write on the chalkboard and then erase it, and it was like all over his black suit. <laughs> okay, so he actually became the fastest growing distributor pretty quickly in that company, so much so that they wanted to go look and see what it was. Like, what was the secret sauce that he was doing? I guess now I have to tell you what it was. It wasn't that magical. Usually they were selling one to eat, uh, eat and one to sell, so a couple minutes. And he said, if you're gonna join my team, you need to get one to eat and five to sell. <laughs> so it's all six at a time. Um, but anyways, he was the fastest growing distributor and then what happened? The company went bankrupt. And uh, it was just mismanaged. The founder had a little bit of a gambling problem. I was just on the phone with him to make sure I have the story straight. <laughs> but, so then he had to face his team, and it was devastating right, to, to have what you've just built, what you're so excited about, what you're telling others to be a part of, and painting this vision. And now he had to go to his team and say, I'm sorry, you know, it's not here anymore. But I found another company. So he took all the people that still believed in him, he took them to the next company um, and grew that and then it failed. <laughs> company number two failed. Um, and uh, it was a, an unbalanced compensation fund, mismanagement again. So then he finds this company, Best Line Product. And company number three. So he brings as many people as he could. He calls them like the remnant of his original group. Um, and he ends up being one of the first distributors of Best Line products. And the entire company um, is under him. And uh, the people who founded it, they wanted to raise some capital. So they, uh, they offered him to buy some shares in the company. He did. And uh, then they decided they wanted to go public. So they talked to some private equity firms who said that they could get a big valuation if they did a few things. And they got greedy. They filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy so that they could not pay off some debts that they had owed. And then came all these lawsuits. And the founders of the company uh, were actually trying to get their debt out of it. Then they're like, oh no, I don't know what to do. We're giving up. And so JV is like, are you serious? You're giving up? I just had two companies fail from under me and you're just giving up? No way. So he actually bought the company to because so, he couldn't have that happen again to the people that he had recruited from the field. He was like, no way. And what he committed to was that he would see the company through these lawsuits and make sure, get the attorneys and everything he needed to have them settled before he would sell the company. And that's what he did. He settled all the lawsuits. And it was, I don't, I hope none of you have ever had to go through that, but I've only heard what it's like, and it, it is just dream. And so here he was, 30 years old, he was like, I think I'm just gonna retire. He had enough money at that time. He was successful, pretty successful. He had other investments as well. He was like, I'm just gonna retire. And then, that's the thing though about JV. It's really not about the money. And he, he was like, I just couldn't sit there and do nothing. And I couldn't sit there and not 
be a part of this industry that allowed me to live the life that I want to live, that allowed me to design the kind of lifestyle I want to have, and to not share that with other people. It just felt wrong. Because he's, he's not about the money, he's about people. And when you look at, I think it's so important, if, regardless of if you want to be a part of the only or not, when you look at what company you do want to be a part of, I think it's so important to look at their why. Why do you exist as a company? Because when you have a clear why, and you know what your why is, your what is also going to follow that. Your what is going to be very clearly linked to your why. Our why is people, first and foremost. And so that is going to determine the everything that we do. And um, so, I think I have another photo here. This is where it all began. He got to start. And then he was like, okay, I have a new vision. He got over the, the hump of all the, the crazy things that happened at those other companies. And he was like, I have a new vision. He's going to start his own company. And that vision grew when he encountered Neolife. He started Golden Products, and then Neolife came around. And uh, we don't have enough time for, for that window. So we'll, tell you, we'll talk about that one another time, of how we came to acquire Neolife, which is now the brand that we're known as. But there he is with his brother Bob. Um, and you can see it. He's bald now. <laughs> I'm just praying to God that it's because of all the stress that took place, <laughs> and it's not that genetic. <laughs> but so window number two is going to be our foundational values. These are the values that he put in place to protect his company. They're absolute integrity. People are number one. Products that work. Equal opportunity and a long-range vision. And that last one is super important, long-range vision. Um, it's the reason that like, we, can, we take personal financial risks in our investments, but we never ever risk the company. We have a lot of money in the bank and we play it safe. We do have investments that are safe ones to make sure our capital is working for us, but he never ever wanted to create something that he was asking people to be a part of and build their livelihoods on that might not be there in a couple of years or even another generation. Our, when we say long-range vision, we want to be here for generations to come, not just a few years or 10 years or a decade or two. And I think that's, that's evidenced by the fact that we've been here for 65 years. Now, Window number three, our quality obsession. Hmm. And a little bit off. <laughs> um, our quality obsession. And I'm not going to go too far into this because there's someone that's joining us this weekend. That I don't know if he's here yet, but I found this photo of him as I was going through these old photos. Do you recognize that guy? <laughs> Not bad, Sean Lewis. Um, so he's going to do so much, a much better job than, than I would describing our quality. But I will, I do want to touch on it quickly because I've recently been doing uh, an audit of our quality. Actually, I think it's so important as a company you audit yourself. And so I've been going down to uh, our manufacturing plant and walking the floors and talking to the quality team and checking their processes and. It's become evident to me, like more than ever before, how important it is that we have complete supply chain control from the, our proprietary formulas to the sourcing of our raw materials. And also, not only that, when we do use outside, like they call contract manufacturers to make products, but we control everything about that product. We control the ingredients that go in and the formula that it's made by. And we have an entire team of people dedicated to not only trusting what these home manufacturers 
stay that they tested, but actually testing, retesting, testing and then retesting the raw materials and the finished product. Um, I was just at an industry event and heard people griping about this because it's so true. It's, it's just too tempting for them to have your formula and then if they're the ones that control the ingredients to like, go, oh, if you want this kind of whatever oil, I'll just go one, one bar down or two bars down. Sometimes it's like a completely different thing, which is very bad. But if you don't have a team dedicated to that, it's gonna happen. We see it, we catch it. It's crazy. Um, and so quality is so important. I think it, it creates a giant moat for us as a business. Um, I used to think it was our manufacturing itself. Like we have our own manufacturing plant, but we don't make all the products because we wanna have good economies of scale and be able to be scalable. Um, but that is important too. It's just not as important as this step in the process. And our SAV, that is a huge uh, point of difference. They're active, published, respected. And I'm looking now, John Miller has just entered the room. <laughs> Window number four. What do you think it is? That's a great guess. I actually don't have one. I wanted to hear what you thought of it. I love that. It is. Window number four is you. Um, there are so many things we could have gone into, but for time, I'm not going to. Um, I do want to touch on that we are we're looking at where we are today and where we want to be. And where we want to be is top 10 and 10. Top 10 direct selling companies in the next 10 years, not just because of the size, but because of the impact that that represents. And so right now we're investing today so that we can build tomorrow. Um, and some of our key focuses are eight players, bringing the right people, just incredibly talented people onto our team. We've been doing it in the areas of technology, product, uh, field development, pretty much all around. Just making sure that we have a stacked A team. Um, number two is cutting edge, edge technology, uh, re-platforming, a lot of things happening in the back end, and some really exciting projects happening on the front end as well, and just creating websites that delight. And so you'll be seeing that coming out. Uh, elevating the brand, not the logo that you saw today. I apologize for that one. <laughs> the actual brand. Uh, and you're going to see that rolling out in our packaging. As well as advancing clinical research. I'll tell you the exact instructions I gave Dr. Susan Beck, who leads, uh, who's our chief product officer. I said, I want us to be a clinical study machine. Make it happen. And she is so excited to make that happen. <laughs> um, but we're, you know, we're financially stable, we're growing. I just looked at our uh, end of Q1 results. Uh, we're tracking year over year, double digit growth um, again. And so very exciting, stable, healthy, growing. And a lot of that is thanks to those of you in this room. So I'll end with this. Have you ever heard of a road wave? Yeah, it's like it's a, a giant, ginormous wave that seems to happen out of nowhere, and it's usually like in the middle of the ocean, and it springs up and it travels for really long distances, like miles. And it uh, actually scientists thought that this was like folklore forever. They thought it was like the Loch Ness monster, and sailors would say, "There's a road wave." Um, and then it wasn't until 1995 where there was this drilling rig out in the ocean with a crew on it that got engulfed in a road wave. And they're okay though, they went inside of it. Um, but they were able to measure it from bottom to top was 84 feet, absolutely enormous. And I always thought like, okay, sure, like big splash, big wave. Like, some event had to happen to make, like, one big event had to happen to make this happen. But what scientists ended up discovering 
is that it wasn't about one big sudden shift or movement. What it was was a slight, small deviation. It was repeated. It was a slight shift in inputs. And they said in the right environment, the small shift in inputs repeated would be, allow for a wave to be created that was bigger than the sum of its parts. A wave to be created that was bigger than the sum of its parts. It's not addition, it's multiplication. That's our business. Our business is not addition, it's multiplication. And when we keep, like the most magical thing happens when we share with others and we can come into their lives at just the right time where it, it just can transform their lives with health, with better health, taking the pressure off financially. And these life-changing results, we keep sharing when they're repeated over and over, these small little shifts repeated over and over. We are able to just create a community that is so much greater than the sum of its parts. And so I just want to say I'm so thankful to be a part of this community with you all. Love you guys. I can't wait for the rest of this weekend. God bless.